These are difficult times for all of us and the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra is no exception. With 90% of our income generated from the sale of concert tickets and with no performances since the middle of March, the COVID-19 pandemic is having a significant impact both on the orchestra's finances and the income of its freelance musicians. And with the continued restrictions, it's unlikely the RPO will be able to perform to live audiences in the foreseeable future. But resilience is one of the RPO's values and we remain optimistic and resolute in our determination to emerge from this crisis continuing to serve our communities, bringing the thrill and excitement of live orchestral music to the widest possible audience. Your support at this critical time would be hugely appreciated. If you are able to make a donation, you can do so via the donate button on the RPO website. Or by texting one of the numbers on the screen. Together, we can ensure that the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra continues making music that kindles the fires of the imagination and inspires all of us towards a positive and more hopeful future. Thank you. Today we want to share a world with you that for some will be mysterious or perhaps even unknown. It's a wonderfully diverse, enriching, colourful world that's around you more than you might be aware, stirring your emotions in everything from TV shows and video games to movies, musicals, theatres and concert halls, churches and opera houses, town halls, summer festivals and Olympic stadiums. It's the world of the symphony orchestra. Over the next 20 minutes, we'll dismantle it and put it back together before your very eyes and ears, introducing you to the groups of players and instruments using a piece specially designed for the task, The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. Written in 1945 by Benjamin Britten, one of the UK's greatest composers, the piece is based on a melody written hundreds of years previously by another English music legend, Henry Purcell. If you imagine Ed Sheeran writing a cover of a John Lennon song, you've got the gist. And before you say you have no understanding of this world, let me beg to differ, because any of you that enjoy sports will have an insight. An orchestra is like a team of 85 players making hundreds of passes at any given moment, no room for error. And those of you who have ever pushed yourselves to the limit have an insight. An orchestra is made up of individuals who practice tirelessly since they were young kids, sacrificing and driving themselves to master their instruments in order to become world leaders in a hugely competitive field. And those of you who've worked in a group of any kind, from a building site to an office, have an insight. Those 80 musicians sit tightly together on stage, day in, day out, relying on one another and supporting one another as they strive to serve their audience. And all of us who've lived through the recent past have an insight. Because an orchestra is about the opposite of isolation and distancing. It's about contact and community. It's about coming together, sharing space, engaging with people. It's about collective expression and emotion. It's about all the things that have been taken away from us over the last few months. And this is your guide. The sound of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, a cultural icon of one of the world's greatest orchestras, its members reaching out to you from the isolation of their homes to create a virtual RPO. Now just as soccer teams have a defence, midfield, wingers and attack, so an orchestra consists of four sections, each with a distinct look and sound. And as with a sports team, it relies on those groups performing perfectly and communicating seamlessly. Like actors in a play, the musicians perform from detailed individual parts written out by the composer. The challenge is to reproduce these faithfully and infuse them with character while perfectly aligning the 85 voices in real time, creating a whole that's more than the sum of those parts. We'll meet the separate instruments shortly, but let's start with their sections. Firstly, the woodwinds, narrow, straight pipes with keyholes, mostly made of wood and blown to make a sound. They are mercurial and virtuosic. <laughs> Thank you. 
Our second section, the brass, also blown but made of long, tightly twisted brass tubes. They are the epitome of grandeur and power. The strings, the third and largest section, have hollow wooden bodies and high-tension metal strings that are plucked or bowed to produce their rich, expressive sound. And finally, the percussion, a vast array of instruments that can be shaken, scraped, tapped and banged, vivid and radiant one moment, rhythmic and brash the next. This is the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Now, let's get to know the sections more closely. The woodwinds consist of four types of instruments, each with a distinct sound. The performers have unique, often technically demanding parts, frequently playing the main melodic lines. The highest of them are the two flutes and their little sister, the piccolo. They are bright, brilliant, and quicksilver. <laughs> piercing and crisp when required, but more often evoking love or loss with their plaintive, melancholic sound. Behind the flutes and oboes sit two clarinets, smooth and mellow with a huge dynamic range and cheeky, cat-like agility. And finally, the two bassoons, largest and therefore lowest members of the Woodwind family, bustling and full of character. Thank you.
In front of the woodwind sits a swathe of up to 60 string players, of which normally half perform on the smallest and highest instrument, the violin. Split into two groups, the so-called firsts and seconds, these virtuosos generally play more notes than anyone else in the orchestra, like a party of peacocks in perfect alignment. The violinist sitting right next to the conductor is the leader of the orchestra or concertmaster. They are the equivalent of the team captain. Slightly larger and deeper, the viola is the violin's big sister. This group shares the melancholic singing quality that we heard from the oboe. Bigger still are the ten cellos. Too large to play under the chin, the wistfully expressive sound of the instrument is the closest amongst the strings to a human voice. The largest string instrument, our blue whale, is the double bass. These giants support the rest of the ensemble with their heavy, husky, grandfatherly sound. The original and still greatest subwoofer. And finally, the brilliantly flamboyant first cousin of all these string instruments, the harp. Like an upturned piano with its interior exposed, the sound of its 47 strings is both sumptuous and seductive.
Arranged behind the strings of woodwinds are our ten brass players, their sound evoking hunting calls and martial music, regal fanfares and pious chorales. The four French horns, descendants of 17th century hunting horns, and each made of 18 feet of tightly coiled tubing, together form a dynamic quartet by turns rhythmic, melodic, and harmonic. <laughs> bass choir of the brass, the three trombones and their gentle giant brother, the tuba. Often used together in harmony, they can be robust and resolute, sonorously mellow or stately. instruments drawn from around the world, each with their own technique, some with pitch notes, some without, together offering a vivid palette of sounds. Our five players must master them all. Here's a small selection, beginning with pitch drums that have been in the orchestra for centuries, the timpani. The bass drum, the cymbals. So now you've met the individual instruments, but of course an orchestra is an extraordinary collective undertaking. 
And while the wonders of modern technology allow us to create this virtual orchestra from our homes, it pales in comparison with the energy and excitement of 85 artists live, tightly packed on stage, their senses sharpened and heightened, reacting and responding like a flock of birds, charting a course as if with one mind. Every one of us is reliant on the other as we give our all to serve our real purpose, to tell stories in a language beyond words, to speak not just to our audience's minds, but to communicate directly with their hearts. And as you enjoy this finale, in which the instruments that we've met on our journey build layer upon layer, listen out for the moment where, from the chaos and cacophony, an unmistakable vision of unity, community, and hope appears. Because the orchestra embodies not only the opposite of distancing and isolation, its very name, symphony, means together in sound. And together is where the magic is. Thank <laughs> you. 